Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone to another episode of Men Talk About. I am your host, Paul Newell. And uh, I got the audio and the video on this one with two of my guys right here, man. I'm freaking amped for this. Uh, I have J uh, Jacob Jerminski, and I also have Coach Walter McLeod. Um, man, Jacob from Jagged Fitness, Walter McLeod doing his thing, speaking to the youth, man, speaking and motivating all. Um, but I'm curious to know with you guys is, um, like, when you both talked about, like, Jacob, you talked about, like, you know, you're reading every day, you're evolving. And Walt, I know for you, like you're 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 really bringing more energy into the motivational piece. I'm curious, like, what is it that keeps you wanting to learn more? Yeah. So, um, I when I first got into health and fitness, right? What got me into that? Actually, I I mean, I grew up with depression, anxiety, and I still deal with that. But I've definitely have 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 learned to to uh, not let certain triggers uh, trigger it in my life anymore. But anyways, growing up, and my brother came to me one day and he was like, bro, why don't you like join the track team? Why don't you go hit the gym? Like, just see how that feels, you know? And that got me into it. And through the resilience of, of going through ups and downs in, in uh, a, uh, from, from a, a mindset standpoint and a physical standpoint, um, I, I, I've learned to realize that it, it's, what am I trying to say here? What was your point? What was your question? The question was like, what keeps me going? I'm losing the question in this. Huh? What keeps me going? What keeps me yeah, going? I'm losing the question. We got, we got, we got to put the question. Yeah. The no, board. yeah. So, I mean, what keeps me going <laughs> is, is seeing how far I've come in my journey and, uh, and to, to pass that along to others, to, to let people know that, look, it's going to take a long time and get into your journey but but get into it with with people around you people who support you people who will be there to believe in you when you have a tough time believing in yourself and knowing that i can create that change and do it through fitness keeps me going keeps me wanting to learn more to to educate others um to to have different training routines to to be there to talk um and and not like have somebody come in and, and and be like asking for help and I don't know how to help them or, or not have somebody on my team that doesn't know how to help them. Kind of man. That's what's up, man. So it's like what I'm hearing is like what keeps you going is 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 being that space for another that they can continue to grow and thrive mm -hmm. and, and, on, and get support on their journey. Definitely. Am I hearing that right? Yep. That's what's up, man. Definitely. I feel that. I feel that, man. So, so the reason why I, I try to make sure I evolve and I continue to do it is simply because it's something I need myself. Like growing up, if I'd have had motivation and people were telling me I can instead of people telling me I couldn't, man, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm going to put it out there. I could have been in the league, bruh. I'm going to be real. Because I did. first of all, I didn't know how gifted and talented I was physically as an athlete um, until, until later on. And then when I finally found out, it wasn't too late as far as my physical capability. Um, when, when I finally started to get told that I was good and I could be better and I had opportunities, I still wasn't ready to believe them. So early on, I, I, got, I had people putting the battery in my back. I would have been charged up when the opportunity can, came and I would have been able to just run forward. So mm -hmm. my, my goal, my goal is to continue to find ways to charge people up. So when their race starts, they don't have to get ready. They're already ready. They're already ready. You know what I'm saying? Yes. That's, that's, what it's, that's what it's about, staying ready. But it's not just staying ready physically. It's not just staying ready financially. Not just staying ready um, even educationally, right? It's staying ready mentally and emotionally. Because if you don't, you can have all the tools in your bag, but if you're not confident in being able to use them, it ain't worth anything. You know what I mean? So. Shame. It's truth, man. That's, that's, that's why I want to keep evolving. That's why I want to keep getting better. Mm -hmm. That's why I want to keep learning. The more I learn about me, the more I can help someone else. Mm. And I think that's huge, too, is, is uh, like what you said, you know, 
growing up if you didn't if you had somebody that told you no rather than yes or, or go after that rather than be safe right. you know that that changes your complete outlook on life you know that you have this ideology like you're you're surrounded by the people you are, you know your family uh, growing up and and they're going to tell you what they want to tell you to you know probably at the end of the day just to keep you safe but you know if you if you have that talent and you have somebody there that's like look like go after that you know like i was saying before like have somebody there to believe in and you even when you don't believe in yourself like that's huge so i you know i like that you keep going after what you're trying to go after just because you you need it i mean i i, I understand that yeah it's it's, um, it's interesting because uh like we're all fueled by something that that's in, that's in us, that's deep in us, man. That's driving our behaviors, right? And it's like I'm hearing a lot from from you two, and it's something that's resonating with me because I feel I feel it as well as or I think it as well is that it's about coaching others to their greatness. Like, and there was a piece like I'm I'm my my story resonates with you guys. Like, I, you know, when I was chubby and. Well, the part of, I, I wish I had had someone that would say and drive me in certain ways and get me to see certain things earlier. And that drives me on what I do too. So that to me is like coaching guidance. So I'm curious for you guys, what makes, what would you say are three characteristics that make a stellar coach, like a freaking all-star coach? What would you say the three characteristics? Let's say patience. You wanna go? Um, you wanna go first, young Pat Padawan? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> young Padawan. I, I could go. I could go. Yeah. So I mean, three characteristics. Three characteristics that make a great coach. Um, that's. Uh, I mean, you're hearing this from somebody who's only been a personal trainer for two years. Right, so um, man, you know you've been here many times before, <laughs> man. Come on, the, man. The, the the way I the <laughs> way I definitely view somebody to be a great coach is gonna be uh, is gonna be one somebody who is knowledgeable. Right, I think that comes first. It, if you don't have the knowledge, simply put, you you won't know how to get somebody to a specific goal properly in, in a way that they don't injure themselves. Uh, and that they uh, are are also not like destroying any parts of the their gut or anything like that along the process, you know. So I think having a the knowledge there is very important. Um, number two, I would say, uh, I would say being able to cue, you know, I think that's huge. If you can't, like when I first started, I was I, I came out of school and I had all this knowledge and I was like trying to go science on everybody and i was like yo let me tell you like let me educate let's just sit down for like an hour not even train and let's just talk you know and let me uh, tell you and, about and, this yeah, yeah. And, and and quite frankly people don't want to hear about that like people who are coming to you to to, to uh, uh not you know not on an athlete level people who are just coming to you to um to to get in shape lose weight gain strength whatever their goal is they generally don't want to come for like a um, an educational program right uh, they do, I'm sure, appreciate the knowledge and appreciate understanding because if they don't understand, then they won't be able to make a uh, sustainable change in their life. And that's what I try to teach. Uh, but I think mainly you want to know how to cue and how to make quick corrections without going into the full science of everything. All right. So that'd be number two. So knowledge, cueing. And then number three, number three is I would say what makes you a good coach is you. You know, like what, what's your life experience? What have you gone through? What have, what's happened in your life that make you the person you are? And, and if you're, if you have done enough self-realization to be able to be confident in you and you can express who you are and, 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 and relate in that way, then you can get on another level with, with the people you're training and people you're coaching um, to create lifelong relationships and friendships and, and also to um, to be able to do that, then you will be able to make more change in their life. They'll they'll listen to you. They'll 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 respect you more. They'll understand you more. And and it's just on a whole another level of coaching that mm -hmm. uh, that I feel is is the um, 
definitely within the top three there. So knowledge, cueing, and uh, just being yourself, having that experience, having having the life experience, um, I would say are the, are the three things I would go with. So, dig it. I can dig it. Whoa, what's it for you, man? Um, so I'll, uh, I guess, add to one of the ones he said in which he said uh, knowledge. I would – so my coaching right now, um, I'm still coaching. Um, and I, first, when we say coaching, I'm going to take it from coaching anything, not just coaching as a fitness professional, not yes. coaching person at coach or a job, just – a coach, uh, let's first define what a coach is. A coach is a person who is able to safely guide someone to a, a, a different or further endeavor, you know, uh, an endeavor beyond where they are, a space beyond where they are. So that being said, I think first you need to make sure that you have resources. You need to be resourceful because we're not always going to have the exact answer for something that is involved in a, in a particular genre in which you're co coaching. Not mm -hmm. always going to have all the answers. You never will have all the answers, but you need to be resourceful enough to know where to get the answers and be able to provide opportunities for your, your client, your, your, the person that you're coach, coaching, your mentee, your employee, whoever that may be, be able to provide a solution in which they can get the answers they need. Mm. Um, so th being resourceful. Right. I think is you need to have a driving force, a reason you do, a reason you coach beyond, beyond the results that comes from the client that you're trying to achieve. So what that means is... Describe that. You, what, uh huh? Well, yeah. Okay, what that means is... With the skill set you have, you may be, you may not be able to connect or get a client to move in the direction that you want them to move. Mm -hmm. uh, whether that be based on the goals they have for themselves or the goals you have for them, or your combined focuses, you you may do you may do everything you can to get them to that, and for some reason something's just not clicking. Mm -hmm. It's very easy to want to say, you know what, maybe it's time to stop. Maybe I'm not the coach for you. So I think you need to be able to coach forward, even though, even though a person is not necessarily getting to your goals or coach out. So how so would you, what's I mean that quality? That is, I would, I would, all, I, would, so, would that be kind of like adaptability is what you're kind of trying to say or, or, or different even than that? I mean, first you need to ha be able to have the resolve to be able to continue to coach through. And where does that resolve come from? It, it's, it's like a reason, like something deeper inside you. It can't be just, I'm coaching for the goal. It has to be something deeper inside you that makes you want to keep going even when your client is doing the exact opposite of what you want them to do. The exact opposite of what's going to get them to their goals. So um, is that like driven, intentional? It's the passion. I, where, where, where is, that's, that's passion then at that point. I guess, I, I guess passion. I don't know. I guess. I don't know. Like, I, I'm, I'm I mean, probably not hearing it right. Is, I understand I'm, what you're I'm, saying, but I don't, I don't think don't I'm. Know, uh, I don't, some, some people call it your why. You need to have your why. Some people call it passion. Whatever that is to you, whatever that thing is that has you driving forward, regardless of what the results are, you have to have that. It could be money for some people. It could be, it could be, um, <laughs> some people are uh, masochists and they like dealing with people who keep giving them negativity when, when uh, they are trying to get positivity. It could be anything, but you have to have the ability to walk through that diverse, that uh, adversity, even when it's so tough, you need to be able to walk away. Um, but coaching, mm -hmm. and then I, I think uh, the last one is discernment. You need to be able to know when it's. So hold on, you four of them? No, no. <laughs> oh, no. Or is that resourceful? Resourceful is one. Yeah. And that that it factor, that okay. thing that keeps driving you, and then the last one is discernment. Gotcha. The last okay. one is discernment. That's being able to say to yourself, 
are you coaching somebody to be better or are you making them worse? Mm. And I think that's huge. A lot of people think that they can put a square, a square, uh, a square shape into a round hole. Like sometimes you're not going to be the one that sends the message. Like sometimes you're actually making them worse by sticking with them. Like I had, I've been in an experience where I had to step away from a client and almost distance myself. And then at some point they connected with someone else Okay. and they became much, much more successful. And I was happy with them, but other people would say, yo, you left that money on the table. You gave up on them. I'm like, no, I was making them worse. Like, Man, like I saw I, yeah. them, det- I saw them deteriorating. I saw them getting worse. I saw no matter what I was doing, me, what I was doing was not changing their, their, their place. They were going backwards consistently. And it wasn't that I wasn't trying to be better for them. It wasn't that I wasn't educating myself. It wasn't even that I was I even tried to steer them and to, to a person or to a situation that was different than I had to offer to allow them to get something I thought they needed that I couldn't provide for them. So, you, you, so that's where the discernment is coming in. So you were able to recognize, like, look, it's better that they work with somebody else. Than, it's better that they don't. I, 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 listen, I, it's better that they don't work with me anymore. Because at that point, for some people, for some people, at that point, for some people, um, they need to just step back and talk and work with themselves. Because, I was going to say, I think, you know that there's I, mean? a few, I think there's a few things in what you're trying to say. I think, like, one, people have to want to be coached. People have to want to make a change in themselves. Exactly. For yeah. even, the best, even the best of coaches to, to actually make that change in them. You know, so I think that that's a huge factor, but there, you know, so there's a few reasons though. It could either be that it could be, um, it could be that, that, that person, just that person and you, your client and you just don't, don't relate on a level they need to relate. Um, and you know, sometimes I think like what you're saying, like, that's, that's something that you have to do is, is, is let them go talk to that other person, go let another person coach them. Um, and I think that's a, a, one of the biggest factors in coaching is that you have to respect who they are and respect their progress. You know, is, is it, are they taking a step back to go forward or, or are they taking steps back and, and, and what we're doing and we're trying different things just isn't working. Let's, let's switch it up and let's, let's have somebody else on the team come in and, 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 and help them make progress. It doesn't mean go out of their life, you know, it means, you know, you're still in their life, but it just means like, let me have somebody else take the forefront on this and and in doing that gets them to their next goal like you're still being a good coach in that aspect so yeah man i mean i don't know if i tore up what you were saying but that's kind of like what i was hearing a little bit on the last part in the sermon aspect of it which might not be what you're trying to to portray so correct me on that no no it's all it's a part of what i'm trying to portray um i would definitely still add that some Sometimes, sometimes you definitely want to stay involved in their lives. You know, period. Be consistent with your engagement. Because for me, I think mean, love every day. It just has to be consistent. So it could be a once a month contact. It could be a week contact. You know, it just has to be consistent. It could be cards on their day and freaking uh, Christmas. It's just consistent. So, so that there, so they know, they know when when to count on you for that, that time. Now, what I, I want to reiterate though, sometimes they don't need another coach right then and there. Mm-hmm. Sometimes they take a walk with they themselves the because yeah. they they always, you know what I'm saying. Sometimes they need to take a walk with themselves and realize that everybody that's been in their lives that's been trying to coach them they've broken <laughs> or they haven't gained enough to keep moving forward. Does that make sense? Yeah. And I think that comes back to like my original thing of what I was saying is, is, is they have to want to be coached and sometimes they need that space to, to self realize that, that they need to understand themselves more 
um, to allow somebody in their life to, to make that change that is necessary to get to the next step. So, so I'm going to pause for a second because like we were talking about what are the qualities and then we were talking about <laughs> like, <laughs> what are the qualities. Like, <laughs> If that's so, my bad. That's my know. bad. I, I I took it. I took it off track. That's, I mean, yeah, that's why I'm, I'm here. I'm here. I, that's that's one of the reasons I'm here. You know, I, I, want, I just want to get clarity for myself because this is gems that you guys are speaking. And also, I want to remember that like there's going to be fitness pros that are listening to this, or people, or coaches, and I'm looking to get some takeaways, right? So I want to make sure that okay. there's clarity here for the people that are going to be listening and like, oh, okay, I get that. Oh yeah, blah blah blah. So this is why I want to tighten up what, what, what Walt is saying. And I want to, I want because we talked about discernment. Then we talked about what I'm hearing is knowing boundaries. Because like from what I hear is like, okay, I can work with someone. And if it's like, yeah, I'm giving you the goods and you're not really taking advantage and you're getting worse, you know, I got to cut you off. You know, and it could be like, hey, you know what? I still want to be here and be engaged in what you're doing and in your health and well-being. And my man right here, this woman right here got you covered. I think this is the next phase of training or do this on your own. And there's like, and there is a, is a matter of, of, of engagement and what, what I, I, I've been learned, I've learned about, I learned about a couple years ago, this concept of creating space. And I see that like, you know, when I talk about when I was looking at my three, for me, it's, a, it's the adaptability, it's being progressive. And that's uh, and that creating space is the holistic part of a coach, in my judgment. Where, listen, I'm able to see. I want to see the whole picture, because it's like, okay, yo, okay, you haven't worked out. Hmm. When my where like when I first started, I'd be like, yo, this cat is a jerk off. Like I'm wasting. Like I'm putting a lot of time in this, and like this cat isn't doing anything. Then, like, I started recognizing, like, you know, when I was first married and I had a kid and I wasn't sleeping and I was fumbling and missing my stuff, I was like, oh, then I started to get some compassion for some of the cats I work with. Like, okay, so what's really going on? So now I know how to coach them. Like, all right, look, so when can you really get this in? And also, when are you going to make this time for yourself? Right? And it's like, that, and now it's, it's at this space where, like, man, I could, like, I, I, in my age range, there are cats that are freaking have care that are caretakers, you know, cats that are like, you know, have had a couple, have had a heart attack or have some sort of major life, something going on where it's like, yo, we got to hold up. We got to look at this whole kit and caboodle right here. How much sleep are you getting? How much water? What are you, what are you eating? Oh, how much, how, Wendy's how often a week? Okay. Um, you know, like what's your stress level? Like, who do you take care of at home? You know, like, it's like it's a and, it, and it's something that I think in this industry, which is timeless, is 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 something that I see in both of you is having that compassion and having some empathy and also having the ingenuity to make this shift and shit and shift and change wherever you need to. Like, oh, we gotta and Jacob, this is coming back to what we were talking about before. Like, yo, that's having the team. Yeah, yeah. Like, yo, right. okay. And like I don't know, like you know, I want to get some time. I want to, I, I want to, I'm going to wrap up, but I, I want to, I want, I want you guys to relay some takeaways because the thing, the takeaway I'm thinking of for this one is that anybody, anyone, any man that's listening to this, right, and is hearing these messages we're putting out as fitness and well-being pros, uh, I, you guys may disagree, but I think this information can can is applicable to any industry, right? And my yep. takeaway is have a team. Have a team of people in your life that you can see, that see you, that can challenge you, that, can, that you can rely and get support from, that can hold space for your growth. Have a team that you can rely on because that, the, the industry and whatever you're in can get lonely, especially when you think you got to know everything, which is a whole bunch of bulls, you know, some dude with a bull, man. So have a team is something that, I'm, that, that that's my takeaway for people listening and watching this. Uh, because I consider these cats on my team, man, it's, it's, it, it, and that's the real business. So, like, what would it be for uh, what? What would it be for you? I'm a, uh, I'm still letting it put, come together in my head. I'm gonna let Jacob go first as your takeaway. 
if you don't mind, Jacob. Yeah. Me and um, me and Pisces, we both Pisces, so our our, our thoughts are fluid. Yeah. Oh, I hope that Pisces in the house. <laughs> Boy, I'm hoping that I'm hoping that Jacob, since he's younger than me by ten years, can put him together a lot faster than I can. Oh <laughs> man. <laughs> I think it's just the process. You like to process properly. I think is what it is. Yeah. But uh, but I've no, learned I, I, to do I that. think. Uh, you definitely, you're definitely right there in, in, in the aspect of having a team, um, having people to, to push you to, to new levels, having people to keep you in check, uh, to bounce ideas off of, to, to, uh, to hand clients off to uh, that might be a better coach, and et cetera. Um, my takeaway from all this, um, that's tough because we spoke about so much, but uh, shoot. Um, Looking at my notes here. I love. First of all, I appreciate you take notes, man. That's what's up. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah Otherwise, I can't remember what's going on. Um, what are we doing? Yeah, I think uh, I think our, our intent to want to make a change, regardless if that change is being accepted. Mm. I think that's probably where I would go with the takeaway from this. Um, because a lot of people are are, um, uh, are scared or nervous or, or unwanting change, but there's there's changes that we all see that need to happen. And when you get to meet somebody and actually make that change, and and, and you have to understand it's going to take a long time, and yeah. and you have to. Be, know that that it's going to be ups it's going to be downs but you just have to stick with it and and uh, unless it's a point where they need that space or, the, or they need to speak with somebody else um if it's somebody that's that you're working with that's actually working you know keep with it and 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 make sure that you don't lose that passion that intent to, to want to make the change so that's what that's where i'll go with that Lord bless up okay thank you man yeah no, i like that one um, I see, remember that you are. You at? Remember, you are still coaching, even if you decide to step away. Sometimes, sometimes the coach needs to let the cage bird fly, right? Uh huh. Yep. You're still there. So though, think about yeah. it that way. Yep. And he, yeah, you're still watching from afar, but right. you're letting them fly. But letting it, yep, right? yep. As soon as they come back, the cage is still there. Yep. You're not gonna move yep. away from them. All right, but um, true. I would say. I don't, I actually want to throw out something that, I, not from this podcast, but something I've learned over the years that I never did, did well early on, but I'm doing a lot better now. You got to measure the results. Mm -hmm. Like, like for me, if a person is not getting better, I am not doing my job well. If a person is not doing better, I am not doing my job well. So, but you have to remember results are how much they bench isn't it, it's not always how much they bench it's not always what their what's their body fat it's not always um how, how many uh ab packs they have it's not always what they deadlift it's not always how fast they run it could be are they happier as a father or, or a wife to their spouse or their children it could be can they pick up those things those things that they couldn't pick up before and help their grandmother to the car. It could be, are they more confident when they walk into environments because simply because they're lifting and working out? Um, now, some people might say, how do you, how do you measure those things? Just ask. Right. Yeah. You being simply with just life. Ask. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> how do you, how do you feel? How'd you feel when you went to that wedding? Did you like, when you ask questions early on about those things, yeah. and you ask them later, that's still measuring. That's still measuring. It's not orthodox as as some people would think, you know, you, you count the calories, you count the, the macros, this and that and the third, but you're still measuring. And do like your boy Jacob, and do like your boy Paul, and take notes. Let's be honest, our brain capacity is only but so much we're not going to remember it. But if you take notes and you understand that those things are important, you can refer back. Yeah. You're like, wow, 
on this day, you told me that you hated going to weddings. And yesterday, you just told me that you literally were the life of the party. How crazy yeah. is that? Yeah, that's a mic drop right there because I, yeah. I think that's the biggest of it all is like uh, you said you said it best like like the, the the fitness industry has evolved so much to to have the the, the best trainers in the industry understand that to, to 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 know that those changes are what matters you know and and once you can understand that and be involved in, in, in your clients lives everything else will fall into place but yeah, you said it. You said it great. I like that. What's up, man? Dang, right. man. I mean, what more can we say? <laughs> there it is, man. And listen, I want to take this opportunity and thank you, man. Uh, I have a feeling that this is the beginning. Um, like maybe we set up a panel or something. Maybe we have a workout for cats. Maybe we have a an event for cats. Once, um, because when this is recorded, there's a virus going around. So maybe we do something online. Maybe we, maybe we do something on person when everybody's good and, and, and out and safe. So um, I, I just see this as a beginning. Because as I said, you guys are my team. I want to take this opportunity. I know we had like a takeaway. But um, I also like to give this opportunity. Let's take 90 seconds of man. And promote yourself, man. Um, like where, how people can reach you. How people can get in contact with you. Any, real, any events that you got coming up. Take this opportunity to promote yourself. And when I do the video edits, I'm going to put your information at the bottom uh, when it goes out to YouTube. So uh, any man can start. Yeah, well, you and if, you don't mind, if, you don't, if you don't mind, Jacob, let me go. I'm um, simply because yeah, no, I need ahead. to go get back yeah. upstairs to yeah. do my fatherly duties. Um, so as you know, my name is Walter Jason McLeod. You may hear me in one of those ways, but the, the best way, call me Coach McLeod. You'll hear that everywhere. Um, that's what you'll find on my Instagram, Coach McLeod. That's what you'll find if you search me on Facebook, uh, Walter McLeod, but it's Coach McLeod is underneath. And that's where you'll find me on YouTube, Coach McLeod. Um, McLeod is spelled M, lowercase c, capital C, L-O-U-D. Uh, you can find daily motivation in the mornings. Uh, and throughout the day, some gems hopefully I can drop throughout the day on both the story of Facebook and or Instagram. Um, I hope to continue to inspire. I hope to continue to change my own life because in changing my own life, I have <laughs> I have the credibility to change someone else's. All right. Thank you guys for having me. Um, I, What's up? Thank I look you, forward to yeah. speaking to you guys. We're gonna talk obviously one on one, but I love when we get to talk on the three three That's way great. on yep. camera. Get to see your faces. Talk to you soon. What's right. up, King? Thanks, Walt. Jacob. Yes, sir. Yeah. So Jacob Jermansky. Uh you could I have a, a company Jagged Fitness. Uh again, I'm trying to build that culture up, build the team up. Um, and real quick, the philosophy on Jagged Fitness is uh the name came from understanding there's going to be ups and downs not only in your fitness journey but also life and so i'm creating a culture that allows for everybody to come together and and be open it's a comfortable space for everybody to talk and and, and work out and exercise and, and and understand what's going on in each other's lives and and just everybody be there for each other and so that's not just what i'm trying to do but what i'm what i'm trying to have everybody who, who's with me on my team do as well um, and, and just getting after that that big overall goal together. Um, so Jagged Fitness NJ is going to be the Instagram. Uh, Jagged-Fitness.com is going to be the website. And then uh, my cell phone, which you could reach me directly, is going to be 732-859-2760. Uh, again, uh, Thank you so much for having me and, and Walter. Uh, this was great. I, you know, I, I feel like we could talk forever. So yeah, we could, uh, man. I, 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 have, I have a feeling that we might be doing this, you know, uh, another time. So what's thank up? you again so much. I really appreciate it. Appreciate you, King. That's what's up, man. Thank you for All being right. on this, man. I appreciate you so much. Yes, sir. And, okay, just kidding. Come on. Oh, man. Dan, listen, I, I appreciate you, brother, for being on this. Uh, my name is Paul Newell. Uh, you can reach me at, at New Wellness on Instagram. It's at New Wellness Guide. 
on YouTube. It's uh, Balanced Wellness LLC uh, videos every week. Um, I'm not as I, I'm I'm getting, getting I'm working on getting consistency on social media, but you'll see me on some lives on Facebook. Paul Randolph Newell. You see me with some tidbits and uh, and uh, podcast. I also have a podcast called Men Talk About, which is this is right here. Check on Anchor. It's also on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Get that wisdom, man, because right now my thing is guiding men to a higher level of consciousness, guiding the masculine. That in turn, it takes, it takes form in how we treat our minds, how we treat our bodies, how we treat our spirits. Because, listen, this is the time we get educated to ascend to a higher height. Thank you, thank you, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Jacob, I appreciate you. Walt, I appreciate you, Paul. you. And we are out. All right. Peace. Later. Later, King. All right.